Good morning and welcome back to Homesteading Gunsmith. I'm just gonna go around and give you a couple of shots of things. We had more snow a couple days ago. Got it cleared yesterday and we had some more snow falling yesterday but it didn't really amount to much and it was quite fluffy and we didn't get a lot of wind. It seemed like we were but it didn't blow a lot. So I will turn this camera around. Just hang on a second. Oh, and there's a George cat. Anyhow, walking up, here's our driveway. All cleaned out. And it's a pretty monochrome landscape at the moment. That field across the road was actually looking fairly bare not too long ago and we just got a pile of snow. So going around this way, there's uh, actually backing up. This is the garden patch and this is where we keep the chickens in the summer. It's kind of a compost garden and coming around to here, there's the boat. We had to dig that out because somebody wants to come and look at it for the trailer. So uh, we had to get through an ice bank there pretty much yesterday. That berm you see behind is what the neighbor scraped up and cleared for us. Oh jeepers, a couple of weeks ago now? Ten days to two weeks ago. Just to get our driveway widened out again. And Turning around, you'll see there's our chicken shed way in the back there in the barn. and It's, it's ridiculously deep, as you can see. And here we go. There's the bank in front of the shop. <laughs> that snow had a bank about three feet deep right behind the truck. We weren't going anywhere till we cleared that. So that was how that worked and right now I'm going to the shed, the tarp shed, to go get a barrel to collect snow into in the basement just so we've got some water because there's nothing we can do with the well until summer or spring has thawed everything out. Here let me swap this camera around. I'll take you along. I mean, really, it's been a rough winter, but at the same time, I still have an appreciation for the season. It has its place, you know. It's been tough, and I can't, I've been re uh, emphasizing that in my videos, but that's just how life is here, and I don't want to live anywhere else. You have these years. Can you see George? I don't think you can. But I mean when you have the rough years it gets hard on you and I mean when we've had multiple things going wrong but we're buckling down this next summer and going to look after them a little bit better. Struggling through a bit of, oh my, snow here. Probably have to put you down for a minute and then I'll get back with you in the house. Say hello to a few of our cats. This is Chauncey. Hey, Chauncey. There's a Chauncey. Oh, you're funny. Candy. And that's his sister, Candy. Right? That's his sister, Candy. Yeah, you're bumping the camera, buddy. And there's a George. There's George. There's George. And their brother Robin. These guys are all from the same mom. Hey Robin. Hi sweetie. Robin's shy. But they all say good morning.
here we are. It's the end of the day. I've dealt with putting laundry away and getting a couple other things done. The snow, as you have seen, and I'm making pierogies for supper and some to throw in the freezer for later. Uh, I'm starting, I'll start with the filling and then because it just makes more sense and then it's ready to go when I do my dough. So one of the, I'm doing two, one is a cottage cheese and onion and one is a cheddar jalapeno. So my cottage cheese an onion recipe calls for one cup of mashed potatoes. My measuring cup there. Right. And it calls for two cups of cottage cheese drained or one pound of dry. And it takes quite a bit to drain that cottage cheese, so if you can find the dry, it does help. Mine is already drained. There we go. As well as some finely chopped onions. I've already chopped them, I threw them in the cottage cheese container. I think I've got maybe three quarters of a cup there. Something like that. More or less depending on your taste I guess. There we go. And then the last ingredient is one half to one full small container of sour cream. And those containers in this recipe were the little ones that are about one cup from the store. So I'm going to mix this up and see how liquid it is before adding that sour cream. I think I can go, I'm going to start with a half a cup and use a clean spoon because this is my own culture. So I don't want to get anything else in there. Try not to get that way. You don't need that extra liquid. That's a half cup. Start with that. I think that'll be plenty liquid enough because if it gets too sloppy, and I've had this problem in the past with the non-dry cottage cheese that it just it's hard to put those pierogies together they want to get all sticky and sloppy and a little bit of salt and pepper i think this is just about right a half cup is enough a little bit of salt and pepper and that's all of, oh and some eggs two eggs will go in here not for good eggs because that's what's Makes it solid after. Of course, a lot of this seasoning is to your personal taste, so. cheese ones. I don't know. I don't, that's, I don't know. We shall see how that works out anyway. Now we mix up the cheddar and jalapeno. There's enough of this left over. I'll throw those potatoes in the other one. This one is two to three cups of potatoes, mashed potatoes, two cups of shredded cheese, one and a half cups of sour cream, and four eggs. So 
So we'll start with this. Maybe I'll make a bit less of this, a bit less of the cheese in it. The first time I ever made this, I was going on just my own gut and I had way too much cheese. Usually you don't say too much cheese, but in that case it was. one jalapenos I have mm, three quarters of a cup there of that that should do finely chopped now I say two cups in here of shredded cheese I think I'm gonna go kind of as I figure this out because there may be a bit too much it might be a bit too gooey Not that that would be a bad thing, but it, they don't cook up as nicely. <laughs> I would say that's a little over a cup there. And I need one and a half cups of sour cream. This is a pint jar. So I need maybe a little bit more than half. Something like that, I think. That two running out. That one says four eggs. I'll see how this is. Start with two eggs and work my way up. about two eggs in this. I don't want it too sloppy. Yeah, I would say that's plenty sloppy. We don't need more eggs in that. good. Now with the uh, dough recipe, because it's from a friend that sells her pierogies at a farmer's market and she did ask me not to share it with people, I'll come back with you after I've got it rolled out and ready to go. Okay, we're back and ready to roll out the dough. I'm trying to get it in the picture, it's not just, just not quite working. But, you want to roll this out fairly thin and cut it out with something circular. I'm using just a nice big glass. Now some pierogi doughs, you can stretch, some don't stretch as well. This will stretch quite nicely, but I don't think I will. I'm using a bigger glass to be able to fill it better. Salvage. Eh, I'll have to do that on the next round.
as you can see, you boil them for a little bit and just until they float, then you pull them out and then they can go either from there, you can cool them off and freeze them or you can throw them in the frying pan with some butter and if you want to throw onions in there with them, that's great. But that's essentially how these work if you never made pierogies you just the the main thing is you don't want too much filling in there because then you have a hard time pitching that shut properly so that they'll stay closed when they're boiling otherwise you lose all your filling i've done that lots of times and it's like ah darn it but you you live and learn and you pick it up better the next time so i suppose that uh winds up my little bit of cooking uh, i hope it suffices to give you an idea how to make progies and uh, we will see you again in the next video. Have a great night all!